Two summers ago, the Houston Astros traded for a right-handed pitcher born in 1983 who had once won the American League Cy Young Award. That pitcher, Justin Verlander, carried the Astros to the World Series, which they won for the first time. The Astros made that deal in August, after Verlander had gotten through waivers. With no waiver trading period this year, the Astros had to act by Wednesday's deadline to improve a team that is running away with the AL West. They turned to 2017 for inspiration, sending four prospects to the Arizona Diamondbacks for Zach Grank and Cash. He's one of the best of the generation I've been around baseball, Astros manager A.J. Hinch told reporters in Cleveland, adding later, he's elite across the board. Adding him to any rotation is a positive. Adding him to this rotation is pretty incredible. Of all the pitchers in Major League history, Grank, 35, compares most closely to Verlander, according to Baseball Reference. He is 197 to 122 with a 3.36 earned run average in his career and has earned six All Star selections, including five since 2014. He won his Cy Young for Kansas City in 2009, two years before Verlander won his for Detroit. Grank has never pitched in the World Series, but with Houston, he may finally get the chance. The Astros now seem like heavy AL favorites especially with the East leading Yankees, a team on Grank's no-trade list, adding no major league pieces at the deadline. The Yankees' starting pitching has wilted against the better AL lineups, but few starters traded in July would have provided much of an upgrade. Besides Grank, the best starters were actually traded to teams with losing records, Trevor Bauer from Cleveland to Cincinnati, and Marcus Stroman from Toronto to the Mets. Other top starters, like the Mets' Noah Syndergaard, Arizona's Robbie Ray and the San Francisco Giants' Madison Bumgarner, stayed put. The Astros, then, stand out as the only contender in either league to add a high-impact starter. Grank, who was 10-4 with a 2.90 ERA for Arizona this season, will join Verlander, Jarrett Cole and Wade Miley in a rotation that could be overpowering. Only two starters in the majors this season have at least 190 strikeouts with an ERA again, without showing flashes of anger that distract from his message. The rematch between Mr. Bidden and Ms. Harris has been billed as the must-see pairing of tonight's presidential debate. But while the June debate featured a wobbly performance by Mr. Bidden, and a breakout won by Ms. Harris as she challenged his record on race, it is hard to find much evidence that their first matchup had a lasting effect on public opinion. Just over a month later, Mr. Bidden holds the support of 32% of Democratic voters, according to the latest Real Clear Politics average. It's exactly what he held heading into the June debate. He fell to 26% in the week that followed that first debate, but he has recovered nearly all of the support he lost. Ms. Harris' breakthrough did not prove durable either. She briefly surged to about 15 percent, good for a three-way tie with Senator Elizabeth Warren and Mr. Sanders in second place. But Ms. Harris has slipped back to around 11 percent in the latest polls, about halfway in between her post-debate peak and the 7 percent she held heading into the contest. It's a reminder that the debates, despite their high viewership, don't always have a lasting effect on the race. A wave of positive headlines can swing the polls, but aren't guaranteed to bring about a lasting change in public opinion. Moderate candidates struggled in Tuesday's debate. Will Mr. Bidden make a stronger case tonight? Mr. Bidden and Ms. Harris aren't just competing for a new round of positive headlines in tonight's debate. Over the long run, they are competing for the support of black voters, who are poised to make up around 20% of the national Democratic electorate. It helps explain Ms. Harris' attacks on Mr. Bidden's record on race, busing and segregation in the first contest, yet Mr. Bidden nonetheless maintains a lead among black voters in recent polls, including a commanding 53% to 7% advantage over Ms. Harris in the latest Quinnipiac University poll. Blame summer doldrums, political fatigue or competition from two hit reality shows. Whatever the reason, 
viewership for Tuesday's Democratic debate on CNN fell sharply from the massive audience that tuned in last month for the opening round of debates in Miami. About 8.7 million Americans watched the debate portion of Tuesday's event in Detroit, according to Nielsen's statistics released on Wednesday. The average audience was roughly 8.2 million for the entire two-hour and 43-minute broadcast, including candidates' opening and closing statements and a Hollywood-style video that CNN aired at the start. By comparison, about 15.3 million people watched the first debate night in Miami, which aired on MSNBC, Telemundo and NBC's national affiliates. Still, CNN's audience was easily the largest on television for the night, edging out America's Got Talent on NBC and the season finale of ABC's The Bachelorette. The viewership was roughly the same as a Democratic debate that aired on CNN in January 2008, at the height of a tight primary between Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama. The Nielsen numbers did not include viewers who watched online or via streaming video. President Trump commented on the low ratings and suggested that things would be different if he were on stage. These primary debates are not just about arguments and rebuttals anymore. They're about dollars and cents. Ms. Harris demonstrated the potential to impact a campaign's bottom line in June, when she raised $3.2 million by the end of the weekend after she confronted Mr. Biden on stage and Mr. Sanders became the first candidate to report any money totals following Tuesday's clash in Detroit, announcing he had received more than $1.1 million from more than 70,000 contributions. On Tuesday night, Mr. Sanders's campaign had acted fast, sending a fundraising email with the subject line, I wrote the damn bill, before the debate was even over. Mr. Sanders had just rattled off the line to silence Rep. Tim Ryan of Ohio, who had questioned exactly what services would be provided under Mr. Sanders's Medicare for All legislation. As an added enticement to would-be donors, the Sanders campaign offered a I wrote the damn bill sticker to anyone who gave any amount. Reported and written by Nate Cohn, Michael M. Grinbaum, Shane Goldmacher and Katie Gluek.